Hey, Alfax. Good morning. Thanks for joining. Let's uh, go over to the desktop. <clears throat> and uh, have a sip of coffee. Also, I think I might slightly change the angle of the camera because I'm usually inside of my monitor and I'm half off screen half the time. <sighs> so let's see. Um, let's move this helper function somewhere lower. We have the day eight code. Boom. Can do all of that and remove it. Okay, now I can leave this open because it comes up from time to time. Hey, Tizano, good morning. So, uh, let's check out Advent of Code today. How's everybody doing? I saw people on Discord saying that today was a fast one. I've not checked anything yet, but given all the things that I have to do today, a fast one, uh, I wouldn't mind it. Doing better, how about you? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, I really liked yesterday's challenge, uh, but I'm uh, having a lot of deadlines. I have to do so much stuff for the, uh, today. Um, so yeah, uh, I wouldn't mind if it's it's a bit faster today because I have to finish stuff and show demos and, and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I think uh, let's check out Advent of Code. Fun and fairly fast, so okay. Wasn't as difficult as ye yesterday. Okay. And I thought yesterday was easy, at least. Famous last words, right? <laughs> so let's check out the challenge. Encoding error. When you're uh, with your neighbor, neighbor happily encoding, uh, enjoying, come on, let's, let's do that again. Uh, it was a late one last night. With your neighbor happily enjoying their video game, you turn your attention to an open data port on the little screen in the seat in front of you. Ah, airplane, airplane hacking. Though the port is non-standard, you manage to connect it to your computer to a clever use of several paper clips. Okay. Upon connection, the port outputs a series of numbers. Your puzzle input. Oh. <laughs> the data appears to be encrypted with the exchange masking addition system, which conveniently for you is an old cipher with an important weakness. Xmas starts with trans transmitting a preamble of 25 numbers. After that, each number you receive should be the sum of any two of the 25 immediately previous numbers. Okay. The two numbers will have different values and there might be more than one such pair. For example, suppose your preamble consists of the numbers 1 to 25 in random order. To be valid, the next number must be the sum of two of those numbers. So 26 would be a valid next number, as it would be 1 plus 25, or many other parts, like 2 and 24. Okay, 49 would be a valid next number, as it's a sum of 24 and 25. 100 would not be valid. Uh, no two of the previous 25 numbers sum to uh, 100. 50 would also not be valid, though 25 appears in the previous number. The two numbers in the pair must be different. Okay, so you have to construct unique pairs from the previous ones. Okay, suppose the 26th number is uh, 45, and the first number no longer an option as it's more than 25 numbers ago was 20. Now, for the next number to be valid, there needs to be a number, uh, some pair of numbers among 1 to 19. 21 to 25 or 45. Wait, let's see the 26 numbers. Yeah. The 26 is 45 and the first number no longer an option as it's more than, ah, okay. Was 20. The first number. Okay. Now for the next number to be valid, there needs to be a pair of numbers among one to 19 or two to 25. Uh, 21 to 25 or 45 to add out to it. Okay, I don't get that because I thought it would just be the entire range, but let's check. Oh yeah, the, the 20 is missing. Never mind me. Okay, I was reading it wrong. So they add a number and the first number was the 20, so you remove that from the range, so you have to be any two of these. Yep, okay. 
26 would be valid, etc. Yeah. Sure, here's a larger example that only consists of the previous five numbers and has a preamble of five. Okay. So what I'm, th I'm thinking is, um, the range is random, 20 was the bottom, yeah. Yep, I got it. Um, so what I'm thinking is you have to uh, basically um, loop through the numbers, um, combine all unique combinations, but you don't want to use do that every time. Uh, yeah, you do want to do it. I, I was thinking like, could you take, for instance, if the first number was that 20, um, if you construct all the uh, range, uh, all the combinations, you could have a min max index to which those numbers belong to, and then you could have like a valid range for those numbers. So let me see. Let's say you have one, two, three, four, five, and you do one comma two as the pair. That would have index zero and one which would mean that uh, this pairing is only valid from um, uh, 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 max 0, 1 to min uh, 0, 1 plus range length, right? So this pair would be valid from 1 to, uh, 1 to 5. Right? So if you calculate all the permutations for the entire range and ha uh, for all the numbers and store them range, um, you could actually just grab all the numbers that are valid in the range and don't have to calculate them over and over and over again. So that's what I was thinking. Have like a sliding scale, go through or, or go to all the combinations. Um, so you step one, and then you take, uh, but I'm thinking for the upper end, for the new one that needs to be added, because for the, all the previous ones, you need to include that new number. Yeah. I think there's a way to do this, but it might be too complicated to do right now. Naive implementation is bad, <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's see how far I get with just a, a stupid run, and then uh, I can always try to do the other one. Because I think implementing that the correct way would take me a bit too much time. But let's see. Uh, static day 9. Actually, was I done reading? I'm not sure. Um, okay. So the first step in attacking the weakness in the Ericsson cipher is to find the first number in the list after the preamble, which is not the sum of the two of the previous. What is the first number that, that does not have this property? Right. Mm. I'm just thinking like, uh, if this is six, compute every permutation of GVR. Um, this would mean, that for these numbers, this combination gets added. I think I might be able to do it, actually. Let's just see if I can just if I can do that. function uh, static dictionary uh, int min int max comma uh, list uh, do I need to have a list um, yeah list and this would be because um, this is the min and the max index that it's valid for let me see what needs to be the signature for this. Because we want to have like for a given 
range. Um, mm, 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 mm. So for a given range, I want to calculate all of these. They will all, all get the, their ranges as their key so that we can do lookups there. Mm, 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 mm. Let me think. So we've got two to, uh, if you, I'm just thinking for like this second step, once I arrive here, what do I actually add for the calculations to use? Um, because it, it's really easy, right? You have one comma two is three. Do I need to know the base values for the, uh, the, the source numbers for that? Maybe. Um, So I could have the value and then have the index for the source reference, maybe. I think something like that. Um, so let's see. So that would be a, uh, that could be multiple combinations with the same value. So I could just make it a list. Um, no, because you want to have a lookup there. Dictionary int comma, and this can be a list of, uh, num one uh, like this mm, get range uh, these are the values <coughs> uh, values and how did they call it? The preamp? No, not the preamble. Yeah, it was the preamble length. Okay. <coughs> Do I need to? Oh, I have a nesting here as well. Okay. Range, preamble length. Do I have room on my screen to make this bigger? I think so. Something like this. <coughs> I can't watch today, but I'll be sure to check out the YouTube vid when it comes out. Yeah, thanks. Uh, the, the YouTube vids are uh, lagging behind a bit because I'm so busy with work. But uh, yeah, let's let's do this. Um, result is new. Blah. Return result. Okay, so now we go um, for int i is... Uh, zero i uh, smaller than uh, values that length uh, count minus preamble length I think and I, I can just do minus one plus plus i because I need to have the whole range there right for that number to go back let's see um, so now we have a four int uh, j is i i smaller than uh, uh, j smaller than i plus preamble length I think. So let's see if we are at z uh, if we are at zero. Actually, we need to start at preamble length, right? Because we don't need to calculate the. the Am I tripping up here already? Let's see. No, we just want to have the ranges. You start at the first after the preamble and the range will be that minus preamble. So if you start at 25, you start, uh, you get 25 till 24. I uh, start at zero till 24. So this would be the start of preamble length. J is uh, I minus preamble length smaller than uh, I actually plus plus J. So let's do uh, and result. Zero, return result. Uh, 
for our test is that. One, two, three, four, five, six, five. Uh, bump, 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 bump. So now we do. Um, we have this. Um, I, and we need two pairings. I think I'm, uh, I'm about to think. I think this uh, might be too complicated. Let's just uh, <laughs> let's do it the naive way and see how far we get. Um, because I'm already starting to uh, get mixed up. Um, blah, blah, blah. So we do uh, get input nine. Let's also put this here. Um, <coughs> because I'm thinking the way I want to do it is going to take me a, l a longer time to debug and check. So let's first start with the naive approach and see what happens. Um, <coughs> uh, string. Actually, we can do uh, var numbers is that and select and parse the list <coughs> so now we have our numbers there um constant preamble 25 so we go <coughs> actually the the loop that we wrote here was fine for that <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, for and J. Um, let me think. So I, you need to have the two combinations of those numbers. K is J plus one. <laughs> Let's just uh, write out if this is correctly because I'm, I'm have so I have so much stuff in my mind right now that I can't even think straight. Let's uh, let's check. Um, so this will be J comma K. Um, quick note: my input for contained numbers too big to fit it in thirty two. Nice. Contained numbers. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I like to struggle myself, so <laughs> or to find out myself first. Uh, so first let me run this. Boom. Ah, yeah, that, that's what you were about to say, yeah. That's good. Long. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for trying to help. It's okay. Let, let's go back here. Yeah, so these are all the, the unique combos. Right, I think so. How much you write before you try it? Sorry, first of all. No, no, it's no problem, man. It's, it's a pre it, 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 it comes from a good place. Uh, I don't mind that at all. And, and this is something, yeah, it's not really a spoiler. It's, it's something I would, uh, would find out fairly easy. Um, <clears throat> so now we have uh, int target is numbers i. So, and also let's go back to the test input first. 
<coughs> so um, I just like to inject it into my values like this usually. Okay, so um, let's see if uh, j plus k, uh, these are the indexes actually. So we have in target, uh, okay, let's do long target a, b, <coughs> target is this. A is J, uh, is numbers J, B is numbers K, sum, sum is A plus B, you could probably do that without the assignment above, but that doesn't matter. If sum equals target, uh, Okay, we have, uh, let's see, bool valid is false. Valid is true. Let me just get that back in line. Break, <coughs> break. Uh, if valid break if uh, not valid console the right come on. console the right line always oh, nice if somebody uh, knows the 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 mod command uh, I need to look that up for, for a bit. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 index. Come on, index. I. We have target. Okay, and we can break out of this one to break. <coughs> so let's see if this works. Debug attach. Okay, so everything was valid. Let's see. Hmm. Um, let's see, target is I, J is I minus preamble, and we have K smaller than I, so, hmm. Let's see, let's step through this. Ah, it doesn't even, wait, what? What did I do? Ah, the preamble should be set to five for this. Damn it. One twenty seven index fourteen. Let's see. Yes. Okay. So that's a naive approach. Uh, and let's see if uh, that doesn't work or that it runs for a long time. That was fast. Boom. Okay, so I was worried for nothing. I could have done this so much faster. Sorry, guys. 
Let's see, step two. The final part in breaking the Christmas encry uh, encryption relies on the invalid number you just found. You must find a contiguous set of at least two numbers in your list, uh, which is the sum for the invalid number of step one. So you need to have the sum of them. With in this list, adding all of the numbers produces the in number from step one, from 15 to 40, okay. Of controls is uh, actually this might be much longer. To fight the encryption weakness, add to out of the smallest and largest number in this contiguous range. Wait. Okay. Okay. So this is not possible to brute force like uh, like we have. Um, okay. So here we do uh, result is uh, target actually. And this will be a long. Oh, let's see. They want part two. Um, pom, 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 pom. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, th it was easy in the end, but I, I was trying to do something that's way harder, a lot more efficient in the end, I think. And it would be really cool to to actually work out this solution because I think it has a potential to be really efficient because you do all the calculations just once, but you track the actual range that it was valid for, and then you. Uh, just for each time that you do it, you um, loop through all the keys that are valid in that range uh, and not compute everything again, but yeah. Um, and you could even optimize that more to have like a index based key that will give you all the ranges that the index is valid for, etc. Yeah. Yeah, I always try and find a way to do it elegantly for a few minutes, but almost, but, but I almost always just resort to the brute force method. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we will run into stuff that we can't brute force. Like I'm, I'm not sure if this. Uh, what is the problem right now? Can uh, ah result uh, was a, a, a long. Um, I'm pretty sure that we'll run into issues that you can't really just brute force. Uh, but yeah. Let's see. Uh, the thing here is, um, so we have a uh, long target is day nine. Let's just do that. I know this is inefficient, but it was so fast that I don't care. Um, so let me think. So now we need to consider the entire problem set for any combination that gives the total. So that means we need to have a function that will uh, recurse with all the uh, ping up front with memory instead of CPU time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but n not just that, but also um, because it's not a trade-off between memory and CPU. Yeah. It is a bit, yeah. Yeah, I, I can see the reasoning, yeah. Um, so let me think, because we need to first generate all unique permutations of the, the numbers, but we can exit early if we um, go over the target number. So that helps, uh, at least that's what I'm thinking. Um, so yeah, but it's a bit scary to think about <laughs> because uh, there are a lot of numbers. Um, so let, let's let's see if I can uh, figure it out in my head. Uh, static. Uh, static um, actually, I could just yeah. Um, it will be a list of list of ints. Um, find combinations for. Uh, we have a list 
int. Uh, it's long actually. It's long, 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 long. Uh, all numbers. Um, mm, 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 mm. Let me think. We have all numbers. We have a long target. Um, and we keep track of the ones that we've used. Um, so that would be uh, hash set. Uh, is it better to just shrink the list every time? Is the are the numbers unique? Let me first check that. Um, so we go to day two, and we do uh, hash set long. Actually, I can do just uh, console that right line um, uh, list length. Need length. Now we can do numbers. Come on. Really? Num. I can't type numbers. Distinct. Uh, we do numbers like length. Yeah, count in this case. Return zero. Because that, uh, that's the difference between being able to do the index and the uh, actual values and not care for the index. Okay, so there are duplicate numbers in there. Hmm, okay, gotcha. Okay, so let's see. Um, so this will be int uh, used indexes, or I can just modify the list to remove the ones that we've used. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know for now. Let's see. Um, So we do uh, long sum is zero for each uh, long val in all numbers. Uh, now it needs to be index based. Uh, int index. Actually, for int index is no index smaller than all numbers at length uh, count. Index, um, pom, 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 So we do, uh, we also need to pass in the sum, don't we? No, let's say, um, use indexes dot uh, I'm just thinking I need to make a new one every time let's see uh, let's first let's get the current value which is uh, sum plus equals all numbers index okay We need to track this result actually. Um, result new blah. Come on. Um, 
I'm just thinking if we need to uh, keep track of the numbers so that we don't have to sum them every time. Use numbers. Or that we just build the index when we find all the numbers. Uh, we can do that. Um, pum, 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 pum. Yeah. If sum equals to target build result else if some smaller than target else over our target okay so here we can have this result um, first we need to check if not used index that contains uh, index Actually, we can just do uh, continue. So if we already seen this, we skip it. Otherwise, we add it and we do uh, use indexes. Come on, use indexes. Add uh, index. All right. Um, boom. No, I will I will make a new one based on this and add it to that. Okay. Um, uh, use this new. Uh, actually, it could be just use indexes that union produces the set union. Now nah, I can just do is new, uh, hash set int. And we do use indexes use add uh, index and we only need to do that here actually so it's not really an optimization there but yeah that's a small optimization and then we can do uh, find combinations for uh, result of add range find combinations for all numbers target used indexes okay so this should work and now we need to do here um, uh, all numbers i know used indexes let's select uh, uh, we need to add it here as well actually Add index, um, and we do use indexes that select all numbers x to list. And we do a result add. Right, so this should work. And now we return result. Return result. Okay, so let's see if we do this for the test input. If we get our result, preamble back to five. We skip the real input. Um, we can stop all of this. Okay, and let's say uh, our result is find combinations four. This will be numbers. Uh, the target is target, uh, and this will be a new set of int because we haven't used anything yet uh, op options let's do that and we do for each option and options control the right line So this is a list of long. We do a string dot join. Uh, option. So that should work. Uh, let's see what this does. 
Was not found within the twenty minutes. Did I execute part two? Okay. And then this one didn't do anything at all, right? Result target is day nine. Okay, let's let's debug this. So if target is one twenty well oh. Ah, my day nine function, damn it. I'm an idiot. 127. Let's just do it like this. It still doesn't work, but. So let's see, 127, right? Uh, 117? What was the number? Let's see. Oh, this is a different data set. Wait, in this letter... Again, okay, considering the above example... Okay, so I need to have this as my data set. Okay. Let's see. That was evil to switch that up. But it's all about reading well, I think. Still no combinations. Okay. So, was it 127 that we needed? So this, uh, 48, wait. Forty eighty-seven one twenty. yeah, 127. That should be doable. Okay. So, Options is null. Let's check it again. Set that statement. These are all correct. Okay, so we have our sum. That's 35. Oh, I, I actually, uh, I don't increase the sum. Right. Let me think. Because this needs to return both the... Yeah, I think it needs to continue with the values there. Some let's see. Is that correct? Let me check. Um, No, because this needs to change every time. It will just be sum plus uh, long local is so we do local is sum plus This, I think, right? What did I do wrong? Ah, okay, and we start at zero. It's in there. What do you mean it's in there? <laughs> Let's see. No, I'm messing up. Let's see. Um, So we have zero and we add 35 to it. Okay, we say we use this index. Why do I add it twice? Oh, but because I do it here, that's not correct. Um, Let me 
actually step through it actually instead of uh, f8 in. let's see we come into this again now the sum is 35 target is 127 we have this one that we can't skip you can't use the first one right used indexes Ah, I didn't pass used. Ah, that is stupid. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Let's run this. Ah, okay, there we go. Are there so many of them that add up? Let's see. Let's see. Um, now we need to have it sorted as well. Yeah, so these are all the options. Now we have need to have them sorted. Uh, and we need to have the one with the lowest and the... Was it the lowest and the highest value? Let's see. Adding up the numbers for the previous value, yeah. To find the encryption weakness, add together the smallest and the large number in a oh, in this contiguous range. Oh, it also needs to be contiguous. Yeah, that's those are all contiguous ranges. Let's see. Why do I get so many and why is that bad? What did they say? Could I just take the first one or let's see. No, because they want the 1525. Add together the smallest and the largest number in this contagious range. Why do I find more? Uh, because I go over, I iterate in the wrong way, right? Ah, uh, as soon as, wait, ah, uh, the indexes need to be contiguous and they are not. Let's see. Um, that's also right. Um, so, uh, for int uh, i is one i smaller than use indexes the length uh, ah used indexes is a hash set here so I can't actually no that still works um, I can still get the information so I need to have it sorted order by uh, no uh, let's do this int min max if min is uh, used indexes I'm just thinking like for the I could probably no, because you only know if it works when you get to the end. Um, wait. Why why am I getting values that are not contingi contiguous? Oh, actually, if we're over our target, let's see. I'm, I'm missing something here because I'm getting way too many matches and I'm just trying to figure out uh, what the thing is that I'm not accounting for here because we get 35, 25, but it skips the 15. So um, I 
because actually I need to have a pass the current index and that will be the start index. Yes. Um, yeah, that's the that's a problem. I think because we can only move forward. Uh, and start index is zero. That's, that's index is start index. So we can remove all of this. Actually, let not make it automatically. I want the error because otherwise I forget to add it in this function. Zero. Okay. Actually, this needs to be index. Not ready for a team car right now. Um, this needs to be start index plus one. Let's run this again. I should only get one result now, right? No, I still get multiple. Let's check. At least I'm still getting the one that we need. But let's see why this one. I'm just thinking how that how that is possible. Let me see. So we start at this index. So we start at zero. And the next one that we can use will have to be one higher. So that will be added. So if we reach our target or if we're lower than target, we continue. But how can we reach our target when we never add that index? That's weird. There's, there is something that I'm missing here. Let me quickly check. I, I think I can still work it out if I write some additional code, but I want to know what I'm missing here. Um, so let's just step through it and maybe have some watches here. Uh, let's see, we have um, the sum here. At watch start index at watch and we have uh, our used indexes at watch okay and this can be just uh, okay let's just do it like this um, so we go to 55 that's still okay actually is it Let's see, because in our example, the one we needed, uh, one of the things that was given was this, right? So we have one, two, three. Okay, so now it's larger than target um, and this should break here right okay I'm an idiot I really want to, st to start saying that less because once we're over the target we need to discard the entire tree there <coughs> mm, no we just need to have that path wait Wait. Find combinations. Why this? Hmm. I oh know we just don't continue with that one. So that should be good. 
Actually, let's uh, let's see. So now we have used indexes. So one, two, three, four. So this one is a dead branch, so to say. Let me think because um, because now we have an index that's higher than the previous index, and we just need to skip this entirely. Um, call stack because I'm thinking we should be able to break out of that. Why doesn't it? Um, why doesn't it tell me why why did it go wrong once I did this because once I go over the target I don't need to uh, keep nesting right but I can't even do that there right hmm. maybe it's because uh, I can't do that here at the first level. Let's see. Um, am I correct to say that I say if used indexes that count larger than one break? I'm just trying to wrap my head around this condition. Yeah, okay. Somewhat. Wait, thirty-five. Thirty-five. Twenty. Twenty-five. This is still a non-contagious set. How does it happen? So we can just uh, let's let's stop this. Um, if um, if use index is that count is one or use uh, used uh, contains index minus one. So that at least makes sure that I only add the ones that we have, we need. Uh, so these are all the valid ones that we have there. Uh, I could probably keep track of the lowest, uh, but you only know that once you've done them all. So okay. So this is okay, I think. Um, so now we have a result. Actually, let's check. Let's run one more time and see if they're all contagious. So we have 25, 47, 55. Right, this is not correct. Uh, I need to have the same check uh, at, at the one where I added. Okay. Um, and I still think that I need to say else break. But yeah. And I probably also need to say uh, that if there's only one entry that it's not valid, and then we have our answer. God damn it. Whew. Okay. That took way longer than it should have, I think. 
let's see. Um, and then we need to, let's see, find a producing, so it's then you sum them. Okay, let's make it neat, and min max min max and of course those need to be longs how long have we been going and is everybody still awake and with me <laughs> okay let's see min max is and then we do min plus max okay so now we should get 62, All right? And let's try this on the actual input. Index was not found. Uh, yeah, okay, and we have our answer. Boom! <laughs> Going for about an hour, yeah. <sighs> I'm always glad when I get it, yay! <laughs> so, how horrible was my solution? Because I think this might be a lot more complicated than it needed to be, and it took me way too long to figure out the way to break out of the, the, wrong, uh, uh, the wrong sequences. Nice. <laughs> Thanks, Jan Brown Rice. Thanks. I really don't like your solution. I can imagine. What, uh, what was your solution? This was mine. Let's see. Oh, nice and neat. Uh, let's see. Yeah. That's the same kind of loop there. Not always contained. Uh, Why this one? Did you have them sorted? If input j times two is target, continue. Ah, oh, that you, you break out of it. Mm. I just iterated over the numbers and summing everything in the window, a wider and wider window until I found it. No, the voice using number, that's half the size of the target. Okay. But <coughs> there were duplicate numbers in there, so you could actually uh, have a valid case with twice the same number, right? Yeah, but uh, I checked and there were duplicate numbers in there. Was it one of the rules? No, you, you, it said you can't use the same uh, the same thing again uh, in the sequence. Let's let me check. Um. <coughs> Same. No, come on. You can see that I've been out of something. Fifty would not be valid, although twenty-five appears in the previous twenty-five numbers. The two number in the pair must be different. Yeah, but so if you if the number repeats, because uh, my input had like twenty-four repeating numbers, I think. So you could actually end up with like twenty-five, then twenty, then twenty-five again. Uh, and if then the uh, 
the answer will be 70 it, it should work but yeah maybe uh, maybe check your input maybe mine has a fluke but I had uh, yeah because that's why I, I did the check because <clears throat> if, if all the numbers are unique you can just use the values and um, if they're not unique you have to deal with their indexes in order to treat every number as their same uh, their, their own person or their own, own entity but yeah it d didn't cause a problem so that's nice um, so part two let's see some okay yeah this is my local something smallest is input first largest input first what are ah, you tracked the, the smallest and largest already there Hey Rafsa, yeah, yeah, I just completed it. I'm just looking at other people's answers. Um, it was okay. Um, I had a bit of time, uh, um, issue of trying to find a way to uh, block out some of the answers for part two. Uh, because it was giving me non-contiguous answers. So, yeah. But uh, I worked it out and I got it. So I'm now just looking at uh, some of the other people's submissions to see uh, how they did it differently. Let's see if input current small. Okay, so you keep track of the smallest and the biggest for each target. Okay, let's see. She so does have a nested loop there. I keep track. Yeah, that also. Mm. I wrote a recursion function that I didn't have to do, probably. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Yeah, this makes more sense. <laughs> Just a nested loop. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for watching. If you liked it, please uh, leave a like, a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and maybe join me tomorrow on Twitch, because I've been doing this every day live on Twitch. So if you want to see if I uh, can make it next day, uh, come say hi on Twitch. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description. Bye-bye. Thank you.